Hi guys, I'm Shmi and this is the new Mercedes AMG S63 4Matic Plus and today we're going to take a very full look at this new dynamic luxury saloon car. So we'll start with a little walk around, show you some of the exterior, some of the interior and then I'm going to be taking it for an extended test drive to see what this new car is capable of. Let's head straight in and get started walking around it and taking a look. Now obviously I have chosen to drive today the AMG variant of the new S-Class but let's just talk about the S-Class in general. It's been around since 1972. There are now four million S-Class saloons on the road around the world. One in three of them are actually sold in China. And if you go up to the Maybach luxury trim, actually 60% of those go to China. But we're gonna be having a look at this car today in Switzerland. It's got the new four liter bi-turbo V8. That's up here with 612 horsepower and 900 Newton meters of torque. So this is an exceptionally powerful machine. Formatic Plus, so it's got all-wheel drive with variable distribution of the power and torque allowing for some pretty trick technology going on there for the driving experience but it's about dynamic driving as well as luxury and comfort and there are a couple of new things that go into this this facelift of the latest generation of the S-Class but just walking around the outside just to take a look at the new sort of AMG styling and in particular I'm going to point out the new sort of front apron the lower area of the front bumper which has these wider larger sort of intakes for cooling and airflow. This car has carbon fiber through the sort of front apron itself which is nice. The facelift has this new light design with the triple um, lights, the triple stripes that you see and I'll show you a little bit more of that later on. We've got the AMG wheels, this car finished in white, you can come around to the rear and again, we've got a larger diffuser back here than before. New style of the exhaust tailpipes, but again, carbon uh, through that rear diffuser apron, which is quite nice as well. Now, as you can tell, it's been rather wet today, unfortunately. But let's grab a quick glance here on the interior. Open up the car where it is a land of luxury. Everything in here, the finest leathers, the carbon trim. I'm going to step in. Even got an Alcantara steering wheel, new larger displays and uh, some very clever stuff as well. So two things in particular. So two things in particular, and the first is the energizing comfort control. So that works coordinating climate control, ambient lighting, the fragrance dispenser, the massaging seats, and the audio system to bring an all sort of encompassing, comforting ride while you're driving in this S-Class. The other is the upgrade to the intelligent drive control. So bringing the car closer towards autonomous driving with new cameras, new radar systems, the ability to sort of self-adjust as it sees a corner up ahead for a more comfortable driving experience. So it's got all of that in terms of technology. The S-Class has always been this kind of market leader on the technology front, but it's time to start it up and also see what it's like to drive because a 600 horsepower V8 is awesome. Barks into life. So here we go, the music's come on. Let's just mute that for a second. Nice AMG logo there on the central screen. But this has always been one of the great things just of, I guess, this generation of S-Class is these displays and what that's like as a driving sort of zone uh, for the driver. But I'm gonna take it for a quick drive. Then we'll have a slightly more detailed look around um, and then sort of give a little bit more driving experience as part of this day to day spent with this car, the new Mercedes AMG S63 4Matic Plus. So let's take it out on the roads and see what it's like. To get us started, then we've got the stalk on the right, as is traditional with Mercedes, so into drive and we effortlessly cruise away. Now the thing about this car is how much it has this capability from massive sort of levels of comfort on one end of the spectrum through to full sort of driving dynamic performance at the other end. And that's what I'm gonna be experimenting with today and trying out the different driving modes because this is the first time Mercedes have introduced their full sort of dynamic driving selector onto the S-Class. So the ability to go through comfort, sport, sport plus, um, driving modes and individual. So I'm pulling out onto the road here. Um, the weather is as you can see, a little bit uh, gloomy today, but Formatic Plus, that's what that's for. It introduces the stability and safety now controls. Turn left. Ah, thank you very much. Um, along with faster performance, not 62 miles an hour, 100 kilometers an hour, and here's 3.5 seconds. That is quick for a luxury saloon car like this. Then you've also got the top speed limited to 155 miles per hour, 250 kilometers an hour, as is traditional um, with Mercedes and some of the big German manufacturers. So just getting started. Prepare to I mean, turn left. It feels easy, comfortable, gentle, and kind of wafting along. Um, no stress, nice comfort, 
comfortable seating position, that's obviously very important. But we'll talk more about this as we're on the road. It looks like I'm in luck and there's a little bit of sunshine poking through after all, which is certainly going to help today. But this video is going to be all about this car in an awful lot of detail. Now I've driven the E63S Saloon and the C63S Saloon before, so the other sort of powerful luxury saloon cars from Mercedes AMG. But today is about the S-Class, the flagship, and believe me when I say there is a lot to see about this car. There is so much technology and so much to show you. So I'm going to try and run through pretty much all of it along the route today. We've got a number of different stages. We've got some workshops along the way. So I'm going to try and show you basically everything that I can about this car. The first part of this journey actually has us going on a little bit of a motorway stretch, which is an opportunity to try out some of the technology, some of the intelligent driving controls. So I've got the uh, lane guidance assist on and I've then got adaptive. So if I set the cruise control to the limit here, it's 100 kilometers an hour, there we go. It has sort of obviously the ability to keep itself in lane, to control us, to turn us, and I always find this such a strange sensation. But this car has even more uh, with regards to this sort of driving control than the previous generations ever have. In fact, it's the most autonomous vehicle Mercedes have ever produced um, in this model of S-Class. And obviously, you do have other variations of the S-Class. You've got some diesel engines, the uh, S350D, the 400D. You've got a couple of petrol engines, the S500, the S560. And then at the top of the line, you have the flagship, which is this um, with the uh, four litre bi-turbo V8. So you have increasing power from about 280 horsepower, like 340 in the next level up. Um, those are new six cylinder engines, both diesel and petrol that they've created until you get to these V8s um, and in particular, the AMG Beast that we're driving today. I should also add by the way, that it is still on adaptive. So it's doing all the braking and keeping us in line and following the cars in front. Um, obviously, periodically, you are not supposed to let go of the steering wheel um, as fully autonomous driving is not 100% engaged yet. But the steering wheel itself is another thing. This is the new performance steering wheel, so it's a, a new part of this car. There are 6,500 new components on this model of S-Class. Um, but even while I'm talking, I'm not touching the pedals. I'm only loosely holding the steering wheel. The car is sort of taking guidance and control and doing the turning for me. And it's just a sort of relaxing experience. And I know it's not the sort of pure purest driving, but this is really the future. This kind of autonomous style, this is where things are going. I've crossed the border into Germany, but what I haven't done yet is put the car into Sport Plus and hear some of the noise that it can make. And after all, this has AMG's bi-turbo V8. It is an engine that sounds fantastic, whatever they do with it. They are pretty much the only company that have made this kind of twin turbo configuration work and sound quite so good without having that sort of completely muffled turbo sound. And in here, we have this dynamic mode selector, so I can press it once into Sport, once into Sport Plus, and the nine-speed AMG speed shift gearbox does its thing, drops some gears, but I'm gonna go manual, and just drop a few more, and you get those burbles, and then the cracks, and then you put your foot down, and it sounds good, it sounds really good. It sounds really, really, really good. And it's got this kind of character to it. It has this huge breadth of ability, and you can feel that instantly. And then you do that, and it just giggles for days. You have that sound in a luxury saloon car like this. That's not supposed to be a combination that exists. That's not normal at all. You just, you just want to shift all the time because it's fun. And if I pop the window down slightly, so we get a bit more of that. Yes, brilliant. Anyway, I'm being a, I'm being a little bit childish, but that noise does kind of um, trigger that. If I pop it back now into a sport or comfort mode, it changes the character completely again, and that's what's so crazy. I'll talk more about all of that when I'm driving it later on, but for now, I'm gonna go onwards towards the sort of checkpoint and show you a few more features and details about this car. Now then, there is so much I could possibly show you here, so I can only really scratch on the surface, but let's have a little look around the interior here up front of the S-Class, the new latest version of this car. And the first thing is that what you're greeted by is quite frankly brilliant. You've got so much technology. This is literally a technology powerhouse, tech fest sort of like dream if you're into this kind of thing. The amount of sort of options and facilities and functionality you have available to you through this system. So I don't really know where to begin, but let's press home down here and head back to the sort of main menu on this display. And one thing I quite like about the controller here is when you reach the end of the menu, there's a sort of feedback. It stops, you can't turn it any further. So as I turn it to the left, 
that's sort of the limit so it doesn't let you sort of keep scrolling which is quite quite neat um, on that display obviously you have those sort of main uh, controls the sort of things you'd expect to find navigation radio media telephone uh, the Mercedes connect system and vehicle and system is kind of what I'm most interested in but let's start with vehicle because in here is where you have all your controls including energizing comfort and this is the new functionality installed here where you basically have a couple of different modes which will tie everything together as you can see it's the seat massager uh, the fragrance dispenser which is in the glove box so if you didn't know um, you've got your fragrances here that come out through the climate control and the air conditioning um, if you want different smells in the car um, it works with the seat massager um, and I mean yeah <laughs> what else can I really tell you as I turn it on and it starts moving things around seat massager going you can hear well in this one in refresh it will have a gentle breeze like the sea um, it's all a little bit interesting really uh, but it's designed I'll turn it off for the moment designed to make your journey as comfortable as possible so that's rather nice then underneath that you've got dynamic select which is your driving mode so you can configure the individual driving mode in the sense of the drive uh, the suspension setup the transmission the exhaust system and the ESP control so um, the suspension has the widest sort of breadth of capability they've pretty much ever had and um, the engine the power plant is that unit that we've seen in the E63S it's also the uh, engine from the AMG GTR which is kind of cool this is a very different setup transmission uh, the nine speed speed shift you can fundamentally change how it behaves the exhaust system loud if you want noise and ESP you can have it in a sportier driving mode so basically you can set all of that up how you want then beneath that, if you go in here into engine data, you can see a sort of live live chart of what's going on with the car. Um, you can go into vehicle data and have a nice sort of live display of temperatures and that kind of information. You can see there is an incredible amount to see here. Um, and then there, you got a little bit more info as well. Uh, power, torque and boost. So you can go on through this pretty much forever. Uh, playing with the different settings. Then you've got the track mode uh, where it will give you information for the racetrack, warning for use on racetracks only, naturally. Um, timing, laps, lap, lap times, tracks that can be loaded or pre saved in the car. This is cool. It comes with Portimao, Spa, Hockenheim, Laguna Seca, Nurburgring. I get all of that already pre sort of configured in the car in these uh, AMG modes. Um, you can go back and change your driver profiles. All sorts of cool stuff in there. That's really, really neat. Um, then I, I've gone back home. Uh, if we go back into vehicle here, assistance, uh, consumption information, light settings, vehicle settings, all of that side of things. And the seats, you have massaging, but you also have most of these things going back through the rear seats as well. So you can configure all the seats through there, or you also have the door controller here where you've got your seat ventilation, which also works with the uh, Energizer uh, as well. You've got your seat heating. You can do the right seat, so you can move the right-hand seat forwards and backwards. You've got the uh, rear shutter. Uh, if I just spin the camera around, the uh, window blind all the way back there that does its thing. Um, so in terms of comfort and movement, it is different sort of league. You've got these really nice cushioned headrests, super, super nice, very supportive seats. You can see the sort of uh, perforations for the ventilation um, and then down at the bottom as well. Nice and comfortable down here and everything just super nice to touch. This sort of leather finish is really neat as well um, around here. Then let's sort of get on to other aspects, I guess. Burmester sound system, very, very amazing. Uh, that's pretty much all I need to say on that one. You've got your controls for the mirrors, uh, windows, uh, button down here to open the boot, uh, which is obviously motorized. Here are some of your assist controls. Um, so obviously your steering, lane guidance, parking sensors, uh, intelligent uh, safety recognition in front of you with the adaptive radar controls. Um, and I guess this is for uh, raising the suspension system of the vehicle um, to make it a little bit easier getting in, out, uh, or getting over big sort of bumps if needs be. Lights down below that. Then you get to the steering wheel where on the left you've got your cruise control functionality and your speed limiter and the ability up here with the home and this touchpad which is new for this car to control basically what mode you're in and what you're looking at on the main display which equally has as many displays on it as the uh, system 
over in the center does and you can change everything so with it selected to the left you can see there's a sort of yellow outline um, you can go up and down through different settings so here you can see a little bit about which dynamic mode you're in and if I change that you can see there that the revs rise and the exhaust opens as I go into Sport Plus uh, but most importantly it now shows us the information connected to that uh, your g-force sensor and back to your boost gauge. In the center, obviously, you've got the large rev counter, the speedometer in the center. And then on the right-hand side, you can go through all sorts of different things. So in the AMG mode, it will load up our track info there. Uh, you can have the G4 sensor on the right. You can have trip info, your navigation map, or just the date, if you're that way inclined, uh, where we are right now uh, and whatnot. So you've got so many things you can choose here. And you can even have different um, designs of the display. So this is the sport mode. You can put it into classic, or you can put it into progressive, <laughs> depending how you want it. I'll have it back into sport for now. There's a head-up display, so I guess you can possibly just see that there with the uh, horizontal rev counter and the speedometer and the current speed limit in it. Um, you can move that around. Um, you can load up, you know, all these different bits, whatever you would like. Basically, there's so much information you can have um, in here. It's a phenomenal system, honestly. I completely sort of <laughs> speechless trying to go through all of this, trying to find it all. So that's all controlled through there. Then on the right side, you've got your media controls and another touch sort of jog panel that controls the right hand display as well. So you can go through all of this kind of like so, which is very neat. So you don't have to take your hands off the wheel basically to do anything, which is really, really nice. Then under that display, you've got the air vents, which all look super nice. These little toggles that sort of pop out um, and spin around and then push back in to turn them on or off. You've got the IWC clock in the center, which looks neat above the sort of physical climate control settings. Then you start getting to trays. You've got a sort of felted storage tray there. You've got um, this one that opens up here um, with a, more pockets, a yeah, 12 volt socket, the yeah, cup holders down there underneath that kind of piano black trim. Um, over towards the, the passenger, much the same with the uh, heated and the ventilated seats, um, but all sort of nice finish with the way the carbon trim works and the piano black trim works with the chrome sort of accents around it. Then if we come down here, basically to where all the magic happens, you've got um, your button there to turn on your seat massager, Navi radio, hazards, media, telephone, and your direct button to vehicle controls, then home, back, and the toggle use to control it and here you can write things on depending what mode you're in or set this up for different stuff again back home so much you can play with you've got your dynamic mode select underneath the automatic stop start so for going up and down through the different modes four different modes then you can hold the car in manual your traction settings and on the other side um, you've got your volume control audio your three mode suspension uh, set up and then your exhaust on or off and then up the top the camera, so the full sort of surround camera system. Again, obviously, uh, why, ooh, I'll just quit it by mistake. Why would you have anything else but the best for um, oh, the remote parking app? So you can park the car from your camera. You see, discover all, all these things as we go. And if I put my foot on the brake and select reverse, you can see there we've got all these different camera display modes, depending however you want to see things using the full 360 camera system. And these things just work so brilliantly. Um, you can have it like this, looking forwards and looking at the uh, 3D map of where we are with another one parked right next to me. Um, but you press one press on the end there to put it back into park. And by having the stalk for the switch gear there, you have the lights and wipers all controlled through the left side. So the wipers are done with the end part and the lights the traditional way. Um, but yes, up front. <laughs> I'm wondering if I've even gone through everything. There is so much in here to press and play with. Um, the armrest with the folder back uh, logo on the top. Open that up, you've got some USBs, SD card, those kind of controls in there. I mean, this is just touching on the start. I haven't even gone back there uh, to play with anything in the rear yet, so we'll save that one for a little bit later on. But the red lighting I can see across the back is kind of cool. It's all set up as part of the uh, Energizer that I was playing with earlier, Energizer control. But I think for the moment, I've probably shown you just for everything there is to show you up here uh, for, for the time being. We'll get back on the road after a quick little break and talk a little bit more about what it's like actually to drive.
There are two main reasons why a customer buys an S-Class. The first is your buyer who wants to use the car like a luxury mobile office, to be chauffeured in it, maybe to be driven around in town in the car, in which case there might be a more sensible engine variant um, than this one, than the AMG, one of the diesel or petrol engines, those new engines for the car. But the other type of customer is your one who wants to drive it and use the dynamic capability. For eight kilometers. Thank you. <laughs> to use the dynamic capability that the car has available to it. Now, this being the AMG version, of course, is striving to be the very best. The S-Class is the flagship of the AMG line. Now, there are many sort of body styles of S-Class. Um, I'll get to those shortly in, in maybe the coupe or the cabriolet. You'd find more people are buying the AMG variant than in the saloon. But still, this car has a lot of credibility and quite a lot to live up to as well. Now, wafting along like this in comfort mode, you really do find that the car has quite a lot of roll. As you'd expect, the suspension is in its softest mode and it has this huge variety of what it's capable of doing. So in this, you could quickly find yourself feeling a little bit ill on a nice tight twisty road like this one. But what I can do is pop it into sport where things get a little bit more lively. In sport, the exhaust valve won't open by default, uh, but everything will tighten up slightly, a little bit more turning, he says, as a big bus comes down the mountain road. Um, all fine. It is quite a big car, so you do have to think about where you're positioning it on the road. Um, the gearbox is a little bit more responsive, but still right now I need uh, a little bit more. So I'm going to press that button once more and we'll go into Sport Plus. And now is where things start to get a little bit exciting. And maybe even I will uh, start using the paddles in a second just to get a slightly lower gear. But the exhaust noise comes through, it sings, everything is instantly stiffened up. You can feel it is firmer, you can feel the turn in is more direct. Um, you can obviously hear a lot more sound coming out of it. And <laughs> away you go. Oh yes, and we turn it in tight here into a pretty tight corner and it does turn in and go round, although some traction intervention there. Um, the Formatic Plus system obviously will do a great job, but you still have the option of going through various different traction modes using the uh, button that is right here. So you can put that into sport handling mode where it will intervene slightly less, but obviously with 600 horsepower, it wants to make sure you don't do anything that sort of hurts you. But if I bring the car down to a uh, significantly slower speed on a nice open straight, I'm just simply going to uh, press my foot down very hard and away we go. So the formatic system doing its thing up to the red line and it's quick. It's really quick, 0 to 100 in three and a half seconds. And just the noise. And what's surprising me is how well it drives and how well it sort of gets this huge weight. Oh, if you try and do a shift too early, the whole dashboard lights up red. That's quite a neat thing. But the nine speed gearbox does a great job. The whole car just turns into these corners lovely. Love, love elite. That's a bit of a tongue twister right there. But out the top of the mountain pass, it just turns in amazingly. So overall, as a car to drive, it's big, that's for sure. But that obviously comes with the perks that it brings that way around in terms of space around you, luxury, uh, that side of things. But dynamically to drive, it's much more impressive than you might realize, as it should be, it is an AMG. Well, I find myself on a nice open bit of Autobahn, and of course, being a German car, the Autobahn is very significant in the development, manufacture of what these cars are about. So I'm still driving in Sport Plus mode, but hopefully I'll get an opportunity to kind of put my foot down and see a little bit of what the car is capable of in this environment. Now, top speed limited to 250 kilometers an hour. It does sound good as it goes about it. And you know, the S-Class is just as at home on a long distance cruise. It's this big luxury uh, platform when you're driving in comfort mode as it is driving around town. Um, but let's hope it opens up a touch here. And away we go, 160, 170. 180, 190, 200. Yeah, it picks up with more than enough pace. And um, yeah, does it in quite a nice way with that noise going on behind you. Now, I don't think it's gonna be open enough to uh, get a sort of run up to 250 today, but that is Sport Plus mode. Let's pop it into comfort. I'm kind of just trying the extremes here because it gives a better sense to me, certainly, of that. And this, this is where it lightens up. There's a little bit of wobble in the wheel. Um, so it's a more relaxing drive, a little bit more gentle. Uh, the suspension is noticeably a little bit softer, although on the small bumps you sort of feel it sort of picking up a little bit more because of that. Uh, but I can imagine if you were sitting in the back, this is the mode you would want to be um, enjoying and just relaxing in. But well, it might actually open in front of me, so let's uh, do this into Sport Plus. Let's drop it down. Yes, that sounds good. It will automatically shift up, so it will auto as soon as it hits the red line. Get the, the right shift point. Turn up to 200 
about 11 or 12 I think it was. Yeah, this is, this is quick and away we go now, away we go past another S class. Please take the next <laughs> exit on the right and then turn uh, left. Okay, well off the autobahn we go for now but had a small opportunity to see what it was about. Um, experience the car there so let's pop it back down into comfort. Now Chill. exit right and then turn left. So the navigation instructions are very gentle, very calm, nice In voice. 400 meters, turn left onto the B491. Thank you, ma'am. Right, so let's find out where we're going. Stop, start, naturally. Engine fires up as soon as you lift off the brake. And away you pull. Now, if you do put your foot down in comfort, you do actually get some exhaust sound, but if you're Take gentle with it like that, at the roundabout. then you barely get anything intruding into the cabin, which is, of course, pretty nice. I've pulled off the road because one thing we haven't done yet is actually hear the noise that this car makes. So exhaust valve open, we're in Sport Plus, and uh, let's just open the door as well so we can hear a bit more of it in here. Let's give this a little blip of pure V8 joy. fairly balance this out a little bit I should talk about one or two of the things that aren't perhaps the best in this world he says just as it starts raining on me and the first let's talk about the price tag so Mercedes built the S-Class and AMG the S63 to sort of make everything the absolute best it can be the car is opulent it is luxurious it is it, like really well designed everything you touch is super nice and obviously that comes with a heavy price tag um, that's not surprising. The next thing is the kind of size of the car. It's over two meters wide and it feels it. You're sort of very, very conscious that you're driving something that is on the rather large side. Now, obviously when you speed up and you're sort of pushing through some nice bends that like I can see right in front of me now, um, that's not so much of a problem. It feels like the car almost gets a little bit smaller around you, uh, but there's no question it is very, very much on the big side. So you have to be aware of that while you're driving. I think the steering when you're in comfort feels a little bit disconnected. I think it could be slightly more accurate on the road. I mean, when you turn it up to sports and sport plus, if I just do that right now, it really does come alive and that's when you get this exhaust note. And in fact, let me just shut up for a moment. Let's just listen to this and enjoy that sound as we go down these lovely roads. Not bad at all, hey, those downshifts, the way it just sort of fires and crackles, it's such an awesome sound. And that's one of the things I love is how sort of the character changes. I'm sorry for beating on about it so much in this video, but how it changes from that kind of docile, comfortable cruiser to this big angry brute that has the dynamic capability and the, the ability to drive properly. Um, he says just doing that again, just because, and then plant your foot. When the rain doesn't matter, we've got the formatting plus system, which is obviously doing its thing to vary the power and the torque between all the different wheels, front and rear. It doesn't have the full sort of lunatic mode, i.e. drift mode, that the E63S has, but it's got Prepare much the same kind of left. Uh, technology in the sense of the way it's sending the power around the car. So I think other things to talk about, there's not really much that's negative because the technology is so far ahead of anything else. I'm sure it's not that far until it's fully autonomous and all of that in sort of side of things. At the uh, end of the road, turn left onto the B40. Shall I complain that she's talking to me too much? I think that would be a little bit unfair, but I mean, it's it's a hard one to fault. It's a hard one to fault. Uh, I find the way the seatbelt sort of pretenses when you get in the car. So as soon as you kind of um, start pulling away, it makes sure that your seatbelt is done up tightly, um, which can be the weird, a weird kind of sensation, but safety first, obviously. Um, but then you get do that again, and you forget everything because life is perfect. The road for 10 kilometers. So the roads I've been driving on are amazing. It's a great day. Um, there's not too much to fault this car about. Please follow the road for 17 kilometers. Well, it got 259. 
So 250 isn't a hard limit, so to speak, although there might be an option to uh, raise the limiter, but cruising along at 220 odd kilometers an hour, that's what these kind of cars are about. we've heard it let's open up the bonnet and have a little look at this engine as well so please excuse the wind our stop point now is actually on an airfield but if I open up this big bonnet we are greeted by the four litre bi turbo power plant so 612 horsepower 900 newton meters lurking in here you can't see too much underneath the plastic sort of covers and the nice carbon fiber piece in the center obviously built in a falter back so you get the uh, name of the person who worked and built your engine stamped on the top of it but like I mentioned earlier you can have the six cylinder diesels or the six cylinder petrols so in the petrol engines, you have the S450 uh, in 4Matic or in rear wheel drive, then the S500, and those have some clever electrification technologies that allow the engine to sort of basically turn off as you're coasting into a stop and maximize efficiency. This car though has the nice V8, which is what you want, but this is basically a very similar engine to what is in the AMG GTR lurking in here. So that is quite cool as well. But if I close this back up, drop that down, drop it into place, my car, of course, is the extended wheelbase version of the S-Class saloon. But behind me, if I rotate the camera around, we have the lineup. And this is what I wanted to talk about, all the different models uh, and varieties of S-Class, because it has become such a popular model line. It is, I guess, the pinnacle, the benchmark of Mercedes. Uh, models customer road cars but we start off on the right hand side with an s500 cabriolet so i guess the latest introduction um, to the series next to that we have the uh, s500 formatic coupe luxury i sort of consider these two uh, you know these are the cars you're going to drive not be driven in with the two-door format rather than the four doors then the next in the line we have the s600 pullman so the limousine version of the s class and you can see quite how extended that is s600 with a v12 530 horsepower and the interior finish is all my back so they're very top in luxury but that thing is just cool to take a look at there's probably no better way to travel in style and luxury than inside the pullman it kind of reinvented that old style s class pullman introducing that for this shape of the car Beyond that, we have the S650 Mercedes Maybach. So again, luxury is the name of the game. 630 horsepower from the Biturbo V12 in here, the 12 cylinder um, engine. But if I open this up, you can have a quick glance at this. I know I haven't shown you the interior of the car I'm driving yet, but here is just glorious. Everything is the best, the very best. And um, yes, very neat. The Maybachs are designated by the logo there on the rear quarter. Beyond that, we have the S65, so the regular version of the car, again with the 630 horsepower by turbo V12, and the regular trim, it gains the V12 by turbo badging on the side. We'll just open that up, show you the interior. Oh, interesting color combination in this car. Uh, but that's significantly more similar to the car that I am driving. And then finally, at the end of the line, this sort of regular car, the S350D Formatic as well. So that is the lineup of S classes. As another one rolls through, S500. The entire line has been here for test driving, um, for experiencing out here. But I'm going to come back over towards my car, which is one of these three all looking rather similar parked side by side here, the S63 AMGs. So mine is the extended wheelbase. Uh, another thing to point out I don't think I mentioned earlier is it has new look tail lights. Those have been slightly reworked to go along with the uh, front lights as well, but it's time to jump in the back. Okay then, so in here, climb in. Extended wheelbase means that with the front seat in my position, there is a lot of space back here. You've got this um, cubby for storing your stuff. If we pull the door closed, you've obviously got more Burmester tweeters, you've got heated and cooling seats back here as well, you've got a lot of movement, so you can basically um, lie the seat down and it does its thing and becomes a sort of bed in the back of the car, which is really quite neat. If I spin the camera around though, just to give you a better look at what it's like back here, um, you have the cushions on the uh, headrest, which is super, super nice. You have this whole sort of central console 
that comes down to offer you your cup holders. Um, I don't quite know how you actually open that back up. Um, your touchpad for phone charging, storage bucket, um, another cubby back here for the uh, for general storage um, that goes all the way back in. Um, you're not short of space at all. There's no question about that. Pop that back up for the moment. Um, everything just super luxurious. All the materials are really nice. You've got your center console here, which has all your climate control when the uh, engine is up and running. 12 volt sockets for charging devices or whatnot just down below. In fact, if I lean through and uh, start the uh, ignition, climbing through the back of the car, you get the AMG logo there. Oh, the radio's come on. Let's turn that off for the moment. And the lighting and everything around the car is just really neat. The way you get that in the uh, door pockets, the way the red lighting goes all the way around, all the sort of this surround behind the headrests. And then, yeah, it is, it is a three-seater back here. But you can just lie back, chill, like I am right now. You can't quite sort of see that, but this is a nice place to be if you're going to be driven. In fact, this would be an awesome place to just chill and um, just play around. You've got a little vanity mirror and light as well. But it's pretty good back here. This is nice. This is really nice. There's no sort of gadgets. I kind of wouldn't mind a screen or something to play with. Um, but we do have memory seats. So I guess I can move all of this back, play around with it, or stop playing around with it, and um, jump back out. I want to show you quickly in the boot as well, uh, just so you can see back there. So firstly, let me come back through to the front just to turn the ignition back off. Um, turn the car off. Oh, one more press. There we go, that's off. Then you've got the button down here, which opens the boot. That opens up. I've got a suitcase in here, but you can see there is ample space. You could easily fit a sizable amount of thing, things in there, no problem. And then, obviously, you can control that from there. You can also do it from the key, which is this. We have the, uh, the key for this car. Excuse me for the wind, it's just got quite gusty right here. In fact, I'm going to do a Run and hide, sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we've seen all the models, we've seen this. I'm gonna head actually inside because there's an interesting little exhibit in there to look at too. Firstly then, this is the new gearbox, the new nine speed speed shift MCT transmission. So there's a little bit of information here. Uh, but obviously this is about lightweight, about fast shifting times, about smooth shifting. It's actually awesome to see inside these kind of things when they do these cutaways. Um, I'm not the most engineering background person, so I can't tell you everything that we're looking at, but the way it's all, all the gears interconnect together and how clean and wonderful that looks. So that's the gearbox from the car. Come this way. And this is the M176 engine, the V8 by turbo that's in the car that I've been driving. Obviously, you can't see this much of it in the car itself, but it's nice to have a little look around. Uh, it's quite a compact little unit, really given the uh, power that it's capable of. Differences to make this over the AMG GTR is new twin scroll turbos. Let's get a little bit more power from it as well. So what else can I really tell you? Well, we talked a lot about the cosmetic changes, so things like uh, the headlights, where you get that nice little orange indicator blip there with all three lighting up all three of the stripes. But the S-Class really was, or is designed by Mercedes to be the best car in the world. That is their aspiration, to create the benchmark for all cars. And it does such a wonderful job. It's loaded with technology, loaded with features. And I'm just going to step back in again for the moment to escape the uh, little bits of wind here. But it really, it just has so much going for it. And one sort of even technology I didn't talk about yet was cylinders deactivation so it's a v8 but you can run it with just four cylinders when you're just cruising or rather the car automatically chooses that's what it wants uh, for efficiency and economy side of things as well but really i mean just starting it back up can you beat this sort of amount of technology and functionality and just the number of features it's got it has a fragrance dispenser as we saw earlier in the, like what car has a fragrance dispenser that is just new and obscure and out there and it's just aimed to be such a comfortable and enjoyable journey, I think, every time. So yes, the car might be 120 something thousand pounds to start. It's not cheap, that's for sure. But look at what you get for that money with this car, with the S63 AMG. I don't know what else I haven't shown you yet. Maybe just up here at the roof, um, the controls you've got up there, um, usual kind of things, emergency buttons, uh, your sunglasses holder, if you so, so wish, lighting. Um, Nice big visors, kind of 
nice feel to everything. Everywhere you look, it's just a nice car. Um, the back is luxurious, the front is luxurious. I think obviously the AMG variant is positioned more at the kind of car you're gonna be driving, not be driven in. Um, but let's just jump out and have one last little look around. Just interested, just fiddling, just enjoying the opportunity. It's got ceramic brakes, I didn't talk about that yet. The carbon ceramic brakes. You even get that carbon trim along the side sill, which is quite neat as well. And then the uh, V8 by Turbo. Formatic plus badging that the car wears. Uh, flanked on the sides. But really, this has been, I guess, a pretty solid look at the new facelifted S-Class. Big thanks to Mercedes and to AMG for allowing me to come down today, drive this car, experience it, and share it with you, as well as the little lineup that lurks over there. But I'm gonna wrap this one up there. Thank you very much, as always, for watching. I really appreciate your support, being subscribed, and checking out my latest videos. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks again, and I'll catch up with you again very soon. Cheers.